exalting your name, glorifying your name, honoring your name, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Declaring we have no any other God apart from you, O God. We have no any other God apart from you. You are a good father to us. We worship your name. We exalt your name. We glorify your name. Hosanna, Hosanna to your name, O God. Hosanna, Hosanna to you. The Lamb of God who was slain, O Rema Shatere Koriba Shata, Lema Shatere Koriba Shanda, Ye Koriba Shanda, Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lamb of God who overcame all sin and all death. We worship you, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you all the praises, Lord, Holy Spirit of God. They are welcome in this praise. They are welcome in this praise. Holy Spirit of God. They are welcome in this praise. In the name of Jesus. Lema Shetere Koriba Shanda. Heavenly Father, take preeminence. In this service we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lema Shataraba Shanda. In the name of Jesus.
mercies comes done when the praises go up your power comes down when the praises go up your glory comes down when the praises go up your power comes down when the praises go up your blessings comes down when the praises
you, Lord. We worship you, God. We worship you, God. We worship you, God. We worship you, God. We give you praise. 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 Come on, shut up, shut up. When you appear to Moses, Heavenly Father, we and you wanted to deliver your people, sending him to Egypt, O oh God, to deliver your people, we give Moses turned to you and asked, Whom shall I say have sent me? We give and your answer was, I am that I am. I am that I am. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, O God. A God who is interested, Lord. We worship you. A God who is not limited to time. We worship you. We exalt you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. All honor, all glory. We ascribe to you, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. You are God who answers by fire, Lord. You are God who fight for your people. When Israelites left the land of Egypt, it was due to you fighting for you, O oh God. You rained stones from heaven, Lord. And Jehovah God, you are the entrance tree, determined to deliver your people, O oh God. We hold the same testimony today. We hold the, test the same testimony today. Lord, you are relentless in saving us, helping us, delivering us. Oh, we worship you today. We worship you today. Mighty man of war, Lion of Judah, we bow down and worship you, Yahweh, Yahweh, come and do what only you can do, mighty man of war. Lion of Judah, we bow down and worship you, Yahweh, Yahweh, come and do what only you can do, mighty man of Mighty man. 
to you, O oh God. We know, God, that you never rest until you see us win. And Jehovah God, as we exhort you today, we know that our battles in your hands, Lord, we know you will never stop until you hand us victory in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh God. This ministry battles are handled by you, O oh God. We hand them over to you. Our family's battle, we had them over to you. Our personal battles, we had them over to you, O oh God. For we know with you, we are more than conquerors, O oh God. And through you, we are receiving victory in the name of Jesus. Let us celebrate the Lord, put our hands together, for he is good to us.
can stop us. Why do we know this? It's because the Lord is with us. Praise God. Amen. I now want you to help me celebrate our praise team in the name of Jesus. Let us celebrate them better in Jesus' name. It is a blessing to praise the Lord and to worship the Lord in Jesus' name. I now want you to also help me appreciate the presence of our parent, our father, Apostle Joe. Appreciate the presence of our mom in the house in the name of Jesus. Appreciate the, uh, the presence of the man of God, Pastor Moturi. Appreciate the presence of the man, uh, the woman of God, the man of God, Pastor Anne in the house in the name of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name. And now want us to appreciate our online family, those who are watching us online, in Jesus' name. Appreciate your neighbor, the one who is sitting next to you. Tell them thank you for coming. Thank you for having the time, uh, making this time, uh, availing yourself, in Jesus' name. And now want us to take our seat in the presence of the Lord. And we are blessed to be in this place. We are blessed to be in the house of the Lord. And this very hour, I am born again, Christ the Lord, in my soul. And I want to appreciate the leadership of this um, ministry for giving me a chance even to read the service in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And more so, I have been testifying and I will keep on testifying that this is a praise that our lives are changed and transformed. And I know this because I am a witness that my life has been transformed and changed. I have been taught and I have been changed in the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to, I want to remind us of our midweek services that happen every Tuesday and every, uh, every Thursday. Uh, we have the midweek services taking place from 5 to 6.30 and all of us are welcomed and I know the Lord has been a blessing and faithful to even have his word come to us every Tuesday and every Thursday. And also on Friday we have uh, the youth service. Every one of us who is a youth. Najua nilisikia ukule inja watu wanajita Gen Z. Na kuna mtu alisema ya kwamba wakati nilikuwa Gen Z. Ati when I was Gen Z. Hardly do they know Gen Z ikona age limit. Kuanzia mahalulizari. Ulizaliwa. Like uh, my son is in the generation alpha. So I cannot call myself a Gen Z if I am millennial. Amen? Amen. I was never a Gen Z. I was always a millennial, depending on where I was born. <laughs> I was born. But anyway, if you are a youth, you are welcome for the uh, Friday uh, service. Also start from 5 to 6.30. And I know the Lord has also been faithful in this service. He has ministered to the young people. And I believe that when you come, then you'll be a partaker of that blessing also in the name of Jesus Christ. As I stand here, I also want to acknowledge the presence of our visitor. If you are there, it is your first time to be with us. I want you to show me by lifting up your hand. Just lift up your hand wherever you are. You are a visitor. Uh, you are here for the first time. Lift up your hand. I will not call you here. I will just appreciate you from where you are. Amen. And now I want us to appreciate ourselves. We are all members 
in the house in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. So I want to share with you briefly uh, a word from the book of Galatians chapter 4 and verse 1. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 1. Now I say that the heir, would you kindly give me in uh, amplified version? Now what I mean is that as long as the inheritor or heir is a child and underage, he does not differ from a slave, although he is the master of all the estates. Romans 2, 26 to 29. Romans 2, 26 to 29. So if a man who is uncircumcised keep the requirement of the law, will not his uncircumcision be credited to him as equivalent to circumcision? Then those who are physically uncircumcised but keep the law will condemn you who, although you have the cold in enlightening, and have circumcision break the law. For he is not, for he is not a lead you who is only one outwardly and publicly, nor is, is true circumcision something external and physical. But he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and true circumcision, and true circumcision is of the heart. A spiritual and not a little matter. Uh, his praise is not from men, but from God. In the book of Galatians, the Bible lets us know that as long as we remain children, we will not be able to inherit what it belongs to us. And uh, the Bible says that whoever received Christ, they were given power to become the children of God. But as we become, as we receive salvation, then there are stages that we should go through to maturity. And when we mature in the things of the Lord, then we are able to assess things that God has promised for us. But this uh, maturity does not come without circumcision in accordance with the book of Romans. We are supposed to undergo a circumcision. In all the societies, in many societies that uh, practice circumcision. Circumcision marks the transition from childhood to adulthood. In fact, ukisikia ya kwamba mzazi anasema ya kwamba kijana wangu alita hili ni kumaanisha ya kwamba kijana wangu ako at that transitional age ya kutoka from childhood to adulthood. And most of the cases we expect that when they undergo circumcision, they should behave like men. In fact, most of the time when they are undergoing counseling, and even when they are undergoing that, uh, that, that program, they are normally told now to adopt the law of adulthood. And therefore, this morning, I want, us to, remind, uh, I want to remind us, you and me, that we require the circumcision. We require to attain that maturity in order to receive the promises of God, in order to receive what God has entitled for us. Amen? So that we may receive that inheritance, we require to undergo that circumcision. And that circumcision is done by nothing else but the word of the Lord. Somewhere else, the Bible acknowledges that the word of God is a sword. And circumcision is done through the kisu. Sindio. Na kwa hivo, kisu ambacho kinapitia, kina to circumcise, ni neno lake buwana. Asubui ya leo, tunapopokea neno la buwana. It is us to accept, to be aligned in, within the word of the Lord. Unapo kumbari ya kwamba, when we accept that we are supposed to adopt the conditioning of the word of God. If you go deeper into psychology, there is what we call classical conditioning and instrumental conditioning. But if we allow ourselves now to condition ourselves within the word of God, then we are entrusting ourselves to be brought up into maturity in God. And therefore, wakati wote neno linapo kuja, and you feel like this word is pressing me to change, you better allow that change to come. 
Wana sithiwe, if you feel that the word is pressing me to even change the way I think, change the way I do my things, change the way I speak, change the way I relate with people, then you must allow yourself to undergo that process. And when we allow ourselves to undergo that process, then we are coming to maturity. And when we come to maturity, then we are fit to receive the inheritance that God has promised us. And now with that understanding, I want us to rise up on our feet and uh, as we receive the word of the Lord, that is a sword, and as we receive the word that brings us to maturity, we have been trusted to this word, and when the word comes, we know and we attest the faithfulness of the Lord in uh, uh, taking us through the process of maturation. So I want us to lift up our hands up above our hands as we appreciate the word of the Lord, the man of God, as we come to share the word of the Lord with us in Jesus' name. Let's now celebrate the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Also celebrate uh, Brother Sam K for leading us today. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for allowing us to be in your house this morning. We know it is a privilege to be in your house and in your presence. And now we ask you that you speak to each one of us and transform us according to your will. Let your word change each one of us and make us better. Let your will be done as I bring your word to your people. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be honored in this service. And let everyone under the sound of my voice be blessed of you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Somebody shout a better amen. amen. Then we put our hands together for the Lord again. Amen. amen. Now, comfortably take your seat. I welcome all of us to this service, all that are on the ground and all that are online. You are most welcome to Jesus Outreach Ministry, English service on this that day of the month of November. I am grateful to God for this opportunity to minister to you and to be the vessel that God is going to use to bless your lives this morning. And I want us to go straight to the word of God. I will read two verses of scripture. I will begin with Psalm chapter 5 verse number 12, then I'll go to Rook chapter number 2 and read verse number 52. The Bible says, for you, O Lord, will bless the righteous with favor you will surround him as 
with a shield. Luke 2, 52. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. I want to bring us a message this morning titled, Enjoying the Favor of God. Enjoying the favor of God. I begin by submitting to each one of us that life is not defined by much labor. But life is defined by the favor of God. Everything in this life depends on the favor of God. I'll say that again because it's very crucial. Everything in life is dependent on the favor of God. I also say this. The race of life is not won by the swift The battles of life are not won by strength, but by the favor of God. If you are going to win the race of life, it will be won by the favor of God. If you won to win in the battles of this life, they will also be won by the favor of God. And I want to submit to each one of us that all of us are children of God. We need the favor of God upon our lives in order to live a successful life. It is important to note a few things that the favor of God can take you where your qualifications cannot take you. Because many people are qualified, but they are not where they are supposed to be because they lack the favor of God. The favor of God can take you where your money cannot take you. I want you to put that in your spirit. Because this favor that we are talking about today is the kind of favor that will bring opportunities in the life of a person that hard work cannot bring. I know you are working hard. But there are certain opportunities 
that does not come by your hard work, but these opportunities comes only by the favor of God. Your hard work and your skills are not enough to bring success in your life. I know you are skillful. I know you are hardworking. But your skills can take you to a certain level. Your hard work can take you to a certain level. You need to add to your skills and your efforts and your hard work the favor of God so that you can succeed in life. So what hard work, what skills, what money cannot bring into your life then the favor of God is able to bring. There are certain times that God steps in to the lives of people and releases his favor upon those people and their lives take a different turn. You know, one of the missions that I have this morning is to release the favor of God upon your life. You know, we are not here to pass time. We are not here to feel good. We are here to be transformed by the power of God. And as I stand here, I am standing as a vessel of the almighty God that he will use to release his favor upon your life. And I know it. I know it. And I asked God when I was, when he, he put this in my spirit, I asked God, I will release that favor of yours upon your people. And I pray, Father, as I release it, stamp it over their lives. And I know that is what is going to happen. So I was saying, there are certain times that God steps in into the life of a person and he releases his favor upon that person. I want us to read three verses, then we can be able to continue with this teaching. Isaiah 49 verse 8. Just want to read Isaiah 49 verse 8. And the Bible says, Can you give it to us in King James, the old King James? I want NIV, try NIV. There is a, a word I'm, 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 yes, this is what I'm looking for. This is what the Lord says. In the time of my favor, I want to say, you know, there are certain times that only the favor of God can cause you to receive an answer from God. That God favors you to a point that every prayer you have prayed, he answers that prayer. This is what the Lord says, in the time of my favor. There is a time of the favor of God. And that is why I say there are certain times that God steps in into the life of his children and releases his favor. And when that favor is released, prayers are answered. And I declare that the favor of God is coming upon your life and every prayer that you have prayed it shall be answered by God. Isaiah 
61 verse number 2. Let me just lay my foundation. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. You know, there, there, is, there is the year of the Lord's favor. This is to mean that favor can come upon the life of a man in a span of a year. That this is the year that God will favor you and your life will change forever. There is a year of the Lord's favor and that there is a we started by saying there is a time for God's favor. There is a year for God's favor. Then when you read in Psalms 102 verse 13, it talks about an appointed time for the favor of God. Now, you will arise and have compassion on Zion for it is time to show favor to her. The appointed time has come. There is an appointed time for God to favor his children. And I feel in my spirit this is the appointed time for God to favor his people. This favor of God is able to turn around everything in your life for the better. And this morning, I want to labor in the word and show you the different kinds or the different types of favor that will begin to rest upon your life today. As from this service. Favor number one is what I call the material favor. Material favor. Please just write down, I'll give you four because we are after this service, we are going out to dedicate the tent. So I want to try and finish up as much as I can. Maybe before we can go to this issue of material favor, it is good to, we know we have dealt with this before, but it's good to understand what is the favor of God. You can write down the favor of God is the power of God behind a believer that prepares the ground for his success, for the success of that believer. It is the power of God behind a believer that prepares the ground for success. Number two, the favor of God is the grace of God which enables a believer to rise against negative forces. The grace of God in the life of a believer that helps that believer to rise against negative forces. Number three, the favor of God is the preferential or special treatment as compared to others. So, this favor that we are talking about, then it manifests in many ways. And as I said, the first way or the first type 
of favor that will rest upon you is what I call the material favor. Whenever this favor is upon your life, whatever you touch prospers. When the material or prosperity favor is upon the life of a person, whatever that person touches prospers. This is the kind of favor that opens an opportunity and gives you one contract that changes the entire of your life. That brings prosperity into your life. You get one job. You are given one contract by the favor of God that changes your life forever. And this is the prayer that I have for you. That the God of heaven today will cause the material favor to rest upon your life that whatever you touch begins to prosper in Jesus name. That God will cause you to have a job, a contract that will change your financial status forever in Jesus name. One of the things you must understand is that when God's favor is upon your life, you can never escape the blessing of God. You can never ex escape the prosperity of God. You can never escape materials that come from the hand of God. And I am releasing the material favor upon your life this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up your hand and say, I receive material favor in the mighty name of Jesus. One day of favor is more than a thousand days of labor. When favor comes, it represses labor. And this is what I'm saying to you. There are certain things that you will achieve from today that has nothing to do with your effort, that has nothing to do with your skill, that has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with the favor of God. I say again, receive material favor in Jesus' name. This, you know this kind of favor? It is the favor that God released upon the children of Israel when they were in Egypt. When you read in Exodus chapter 3 verse number 21, if we can be able to read that, Exodus 3 verse number 21. It says, And I will make the Egyptians favorable disposed towards these people so that when you leave, you will not go empty handed. Now go to Exodus chapter 12, verse number 36. Please. It says, And the Lord had given, you know, he had promised that he, there is a certain kind of favor that he will release. What is called the material favor. He promises in Exodus 3, 21. Now here, now the fulfillment. Exodus 12, 36. And the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they granted them what they requested, that they plundered the Egyptians. The materials that they got from the Egyptians were not gotten because of what they did. It was gotten by the reason of favor. Favor brought materials to them. And that is why I am calling this favor material favor. Enjoy material favor. From today, begin to enjoy material favor in Jesus' name. Lift up your hand and say, I receive material favor. Number two kind of favor is what we call the mental favor. Mental. The mental favor. Mental favor. Mental favor. If you are writing, just write down mental 
favor. You know, one of the things that happens every time God releases mental favor upon a man, that man begins to operate in a certain kind of wisdom that you cannot explain. When the mental favor comes, you will begin to operate in wisdom that you cannot operate. You begin to have divine ideas that you cannot be able to explain. You will have wisdom. And people will ask, where did this man get this wisdom? It comes with favor. It comes with mental favor. That you are so favored mentally that you have wisdom that you cannot explain where it came from. That you have divine ideas that you are not able to explain where they came from. And this is what I'm praying for you. That the Lord will cause mental favor to rest upon your life. And this is what was operating with Daniel. If you read, I believe, Daniel chapter number 2, you begin verse number 20. Please, if you can be able to read that and see, it says, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changes the times and seasons. He removes the kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. This man, Daniel, he was operating in a high level of wisdom and understanding. Why? Because he was enjoying what I call mental favor. That what is not available to the other wise men of Babylon was available to Daniel. What the wise men could not be able to decode, the man that carries mental favor, Daniel, could decode. All the wise men put together in Babylon, they could not match the wisdom of Daniel. And this is what I am praying for us, that even though we are in Karura, we shall operate with such kind of wisdom that no other wisdom will be able to overtake our wisdom. Daniel had mental favor that caused him to cost him to operate in a level of wisdom that was not available in Babylon. And when he operated in that wisdom, and when that mental favor was upon him, he was being promoted. He had a lot of favor with the leader. Now, please, can you imagine this? That Daniel leaned in Babylon First king came, died, left Daniel leaning. Second king came, put David in leadership. He died, left Daniel leaning. He leaned. It is like you, you are, you are in power in the time of Kenyatta, in the time of Moi, and in the time of Kibake. Three kingdoms. He was still relevant. Why? Mental favor. I, I say to you, you will be relevant. You, wherever you go, by the reason of mental favor, you will be relevant wherever you are. When other people are losing relevance, you will never lose your relevance. Why? Mental favor. Lift up your hand and say, I receive mental favor. Please look at your neighbor and just look at them in the eye. I want you to be the prophet or the prophetess of your neighbor. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you will shine in this generation by your wisdom. And you know where this wisdom is coming from? It is coming from mental favor. Mental favor. 
mental favor. That when you speak, people, they think that nobody else has spoken before you. Yes. Your word will carry power. Anytime you give a suggestion, it's a suggestion that is enveloped with favor. And this is what was happening in, with Daniel. He was always at the top. You know, when the king could not interpret a dream, and everybody else was told to come and interpret the wise men, and they could not find anybody to interpret the dream, somebody brought Daniel. Because when everyone else is not able, there is one that is carrying the favor of God. And he told the king, give me a few days. I'll bring you the answer. I say this to you. Carry the answer for your generation. Carry the answer for your families. By the reason of mental favor. Now, receive mental favor in the name of Jesus. Receive mental favor in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hand and say, I receive mental favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Number three kind of favor is called the face favor. The face favor. Face. The face. F-A-C-E. The face favor. This is the kind of favor that when you appear and people see your face, doors begin to open. Acceptance comes. People, everybody begins to favor you. You know, I, I was reading from the book of uh, Esther chapter 2 verse number 15. If you can read that. Esther chapter 2 verse number 15. Let's read that. Now, when the turn came for Esther, the daughter of Abihail, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her as his daughter, to go into the king, she requested nothing but what Haggai, the king's eunuch, the custodian of the women, advised. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all who saw her. Everyone that saw the face of Esther, she obtained favor from them. When her face appeared, favor appeared. When her face appeared, acceptance appeared. And I am praying for somebody today that your face from today will carry favor. Please look at your neighbor and say, from today, your face will carry favor. So that wherever you enter, when others are being asked questions, you will be told pass. When others are being rejected, because your face carries favor, you will be accepted. That is the kind of favor I release to you. I release the first favor upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus. This is the, the, the kind of favor that Ruth had. Ruth, you remember Ruth that came back with Naomi. Ruth chapter 2. If you read uh, Ruth chapter four, 2 verse number 5. Let's start verse 5. So that we see how we wrap this. Then Boaz said to his servant, who was in charge of the reapers, whose young woman is this? So, you know, he saw Ruth. He never asked about any, any other girl, but he is, Boaz is asking, please go back to verse 5. There were many reapers in the land of Boaz. But the Bible is saying, then Boaz said to his servant, who was in charge of the reapers. Did they say reaper? No. They say reapers. So there were many. Who, whose young woman 
as this, verse number 6. So the servant who was in charge of the reapers answered and said, it is the young Moabite woman who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. Verse number 7. And she said, please let me green and gather after the reapers among the sheep." So she came and has continued from morning until now. Though she rested a little in the house. Now listen to verse 8. Then Boaz said to Ruth, you will, listen, my, you will listen, my daughter, will you not? Do not green in another field. Now go from here, but stay close to my young women. Verse 9. Let your eyes be on the field which they reap and go after them. Have I not commanded the young men not to touch you. And when you are thirsty, go to the vessels and drink from what the young men have drawn. Ten. So she fell on her face, bowed down on the ground and said to him, Why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice, that you should take notice of me since I'm a foreigner? No, that is very important. She was a foreigner. And she was not a normal reaper. She just entered the farm. But when she entered the farm, Boaz did not see any other face. He saw the face of Ruth and gave her preferential treatment and said, you will not even go to fetch water. If you are thirsty, the water the man has drawn is the water you are going to drink. You will not even green with them. You will go behind them. And he instructed the people that were greening to leave something for her. She was collecting. She was not working. Her work was to collect. Why? She had received what we call the first favor. And Boaz, when he saw her, favor rested upon her. Favor was all over her. I declare the face favor upon your life. That when you appear, even if they wanted to say no, they will say yes. Even if they wanted to lock the door, they will open the door. Even if there was no job, they will create a space for you. This is the face favor that we are talking about. Face favor. Please look at your neighbor and say, from today, I will carry the face favor. From today, I will carry the face favor. You know, I, I remember some time back, one of my uncles, I will not mention names. One time I went to sleep in his house. I was invited by my auntie to sleep in his house. Because he was abroad. And my auntie says that come stay with us for the time the husband is abroad. So I went there. And I stayed there, I think, for four days. He came back, I think, on the fourth, fourth night. And when he found me in one bedroom with his sons in the morning when he was waking them up, he looked at me. His countenance changed. And he said, what is this man doing in my house? My God. It was very embarrassing for me. Now, fast forward. It happened that, you know, let me tell you, when you don't have face favor, People will speak all manner of things. They will reject you like that, the way I was done. But later on, <laughs> God gave me the face favor. So the same man that was asking, when he saw my face, he was asking what he is doing here. Every time I appeared in his office, oh, Joseph, come in, Joseph, come in. And it's the same man that was rejecting my face. There came a time that 
He only, wa- he only wanted to see me. <laughs> that is what I'm talking about. Where your face was rejected before, I release the face favor upon your life that from now, wherever you appear, your face will be accepted. Your face will cause doors to open. Your face will cause opportunities to be granted to you in Jesus' name. Lift up your hand and say, I receive the face favor. Number four, and then we finish so that we go and dedicate the tent. It's called the name favor. Name. N-A-M-E. The name favor. Let me say this to you. When you carry the name favor, your name is always mentioned where it matters in life. I'll say that again. When you carry the what I call the name favor, your name will be mentioned where it matters in life. I have a friend of mine. Now he's gone to be with the Lord. He was a very great friend of President Moy Nyayo. I was told by someone who was very close, who used to be with him many times when he used to go and see Nyayo, that sometimes the president, President Moy, will be holding a meeting in his Kabarak home because he used to go to Kabarak home in his Kabarak home with senior government officials and senior people in the country. And when this man would come to Kabarak at the gate, he would tell the guards, I am here to see the president. And he gives his name. Now, the guards would call the house. And the one that answers is, who is this? So and so is here at the gate. And they mention his name. I was told that he used to scatter that meeting because that name has been mentioned for him to come in. And the, I will not mention him. They are big names that used to complain that whenever that man came, come, and his name is mentioned, they are put in a separate room. They are told, you wait, so and so has come. So the meeting is postponed because a name has been mentioned. May that be your portion. May you carry what I call name favor, that when your name is mentioned, favor will rocket you in Jesus' name. seen that where when your name is mentioned nobody cares no? nobody it, it is like they have mentioned the name of a goat nobody but from today where your name will be mentioned favor will rocket your life I'm, I was looking for a scripture. King Saul requires somebody to pray the harp for him. First Samuel 16. Let's see. Samuel, First Samuel 16. Check verse 17. 17 there, 18. Yeah. He says, So Saul said to his servants, Provide me now a man who can play well 
and bring him to me. You know who is talking? The king of Israel by the name of Saul. He needs someone to be called to, to come and play music for him. Now, he's asking the servant to get him somebody who can play music for him. Now, the Bible says, then one of the servants answered and said, look, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who is skillful in praying a mighty man of error, a man of war, prudent in speech, and a handsome person, and the Lord is with him. Verse 19. Therefore, Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, send me your son David, who is with the sheep. The guy is in the field. <laughs> Taking care of sheep. The king is in the palace. He requires somebody to play music for him. The name of David carried favor. When the king asked somebody to be gotten for him, the servant said, I know one, David, the son of Jesse. May your name be mentioned where it matters. May your name be mentioned where it matters. May your name call a favor. That when your name is mentioned, doors begin to open. So how did David go to the palace? By his name being mentioned in the palace to the king. Why? His name carried favor. How did Joseph get to the palace of Pharaoh? By his name being mentioned by the butler. If your name carries favor, you cannot be stranded in life. You cannot struggle in life. I said the, this kind of favor is what prepares the ground for your success in life. I know it because I have also experienced it. If I go back and tell you what has happened in my life, you will know there is a God that releases favor upon his own people. Lift up your hand and say, my name will carry favor from today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. David was not as built as the others, but his name carried favor. Joseph was not an Egyptian, but his name carried favor. No matter where you find yourself, may your face carry favor and may your name also carry favor. One of the things that maybe I can finish with so that we do what is needed after this is to let you know that this obtaining the favor of God is not automatic. I know some people hearts have bent. Obtaining or having God's favor is not automatic. So we must ask ourselves, how do we attract the favor of God? Number one, by living a life of humility. By living a life of humility. I would want us to read from 
the book of 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 5, please. 1 Peter. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourself to your elders. Yes. All of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. Be clothed with humility. Be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud but gives grace or favor to the humble. If you want to enjoy the favor of God, you must live a lifestyle of humility. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exhort you in due time. Number two, walk in faithfulness. Walk in faithfulness. Maybe I will just give you a scripture so that uh, because there are many verses, you can uh, write Genesis chapter 6, verse 1, all the way to 9, so that you can be able to read. I can summarize for you. Noah found favor with God because of his faithfulness. He was faithful. Therefore, he found favor with God. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Why? He was faithful. When others are dying, Noah, but Noah found favor with the Lord. Genesis 6, 8. Why did he find favor? Because he lives, he, he walked in faithfulness. Number three, way of accessing or attracting the favor of God is that hate what God hates. Hate what God hates. I, I was reading a scripture that, uh, where is it? Revelation chapter 2, verse number 6. Please put it on the screen. But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicoretians, which I also hate. No, he is talking to the church and he's saying, because you hate what I hate, I will release my favor to you. So if you are going to attract the favor of God, you must hate what God hates. Please look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, from today, you must begin to hate what God also hates. Number four, so that we finish, is that you must love God wholeheartedly. Proverbs chapter 3, we start verse 1 all the way to 4. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace, they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bite them around your neck. Write them on, you, on the tablet of your heart. Verse 4. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. When you love God wholeheartedly and you do what he wants done, then you will enjoy high favor before him and before men. And that is why we read in Rook 2, verse number 52, which I want us to read again in, in NIV. It's okay. Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God 
and all people. I pray for you that you will fulfill the requirements for obtaining, for attracting, and for accessing the favor of God in your life. I'll remind you this. Favor is the reason. Please look at your neighbor and say, favor is the reason you will succeed in life. You will break limitations. You will achieve your goals. You will be at the right place at the right time. Tell them favor is the reason you will advance in life. Favor is the reason you will be selected above others. Favor is the reason your cup will overflow in this life. Tell them favor is the reason you will stand out in life. Tell them favor is the reason you will accomplish the impossible. Then put your hands together. Let's celebrate the Lord. I want you to bow your head now. I want you to make this prayer. We are praying, oh Lord, envelop my life with your favor. Open up your mouth, begin to call upon the name of the Lord. Ask him to envelop your life with favor. Ask him to envelop your families with favor. Ask him to envelop every area of your life with his favor. In the mighty name of Jesus. The favor of God is the reason of unexpected blessings. The favor of God is the reason for success in life. The favor of God is the reason for achieving the impossible. The favor of God is the reason of making progress in life. Call upon his name. Ask him, Father, envelop my life with your favor. Envelop my life with your favor. Envelop my life with your favor. Envelop my family with your favor. When you carry favor, when you carry favor, when you carry favor, you cannot escape the blessings of God. You cannot escape success in life. You cannot escape opportunities. When you carry favor, you cannot be rejected. When you carry favor, doors cannot be shut on your face. When you carry favor, you carry God with you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for allowing me and enabling me to speak your word to your people. Now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I release divine favor upon everyone under the sound of my voice. I release divine favor to their lives individually. I release divine favor into their families. I release divine favor into the work of their hands. I release divine favor in every area of their lives. Father, let everyone that is under the sound of my voice begin to shine because of your favor. Let your favor make the difference in the lives of your people. We thank you, Father, and we worship your name. In Jesus' name, we pray and we give thanks. 
please look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, from today, I will walk in the favor of God. Look at them again and say, neighbor, you will walk in the favor of God. You will enjoy the favor of God in Jesus' name. Then put your hands together. Let's celebrate the Lord today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now from here, let favor be evident in your life. That anyone that sees you, they will know you carry the mark of the favor of God. In Jesus' name. One of the things that I am a carrier of is that divine favor. I carry divine favor, favor that is crazy. The other day, dead and knows there was a big man that was coming into the country. And Dedan is the one that was setting up the tents and the tables for that ranch somewhere in Mudaiga. He set the table. He can tell you out of the chosen few, 15 chosen few, I was the only African. The only African out of 15 chosen few. Even dead and who said the table was not there. And you know, I am sitting down there and wondering. You know, I look at it. I say, it's, it's, this is not, it is not normal. But I remembered I am also not normal. I am a carrier of dangerous favor. When we finished everything, then we asked Dad and come and remove the table and the tent and the table cruise. But because he is touching the things that are connected with the man that is carrying favor, he will one day also find himself eating amongst great people, being the only one that is an African. And you know the way, you know the way service is done because the, the chef that was making the food he did a fantastic job and, and some of the food I've never eaten and I ate it on that day and, and I was enjoying myself and I was just saying okay I am saying this this is what divine favor can do now as I enjoy divine favor Go enjoy divine favor. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's celebrate the Lord in a very, very, very powerful way. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We are almost done. We have seven minutes for in this service. So we want to worship God with our giving. Our, our, uh, with our giving of, of, of offerings sowing seeds and paying our tithes. And, and let me tell you, let me say this, I know we are online, it's okay. On Sunday, many people came and touched the altar with their phones that they have given. So what I did, I went to the bank because I wanted to know these people that touched the altar with their phones, what did they do?
May God have mercy on them. You know, when I went, you know, they, they print the statement and say, this money came from this number. Let me not go ahead with that because I don't want to embarrass anybody. But I am saying, be true to yourself and be true to God. Because what the pastor does not see, <laughs> God sees. Anyway, that's, that's, I'll, I'll talk about that another day. So we are giving so that we go and dedicate the tent. Uh, so in case you want to use the pay bill, and that's the pay bill, and that is where I go to the bank and I ask them to give me a statement so that I see how people have given. You know, let me, let me say this before as you prepare to give. How do you take your phone and you send 50 shillings to the bank? And that entry itself, it will be charged at the end of the month in the bank. So for us, we see you coming to touch the altar with the phone. We didn't know that it is 50 minus the charges in the bank. It is better you put the 50 here than take it to the bank. And we have no problem in anybody giving 50 because there are people who can only give 50 for now. I'm saying for now because I know God will bless you. But we must be truthful to ourselves and to God himself. If you did not send any money to the bank, don't touch the altar with your phone. Because you might bring yourself a curse. We don't want. If you don't have money, you don't have money. Don't pretend you have money when you don't have money. Tell God, I wanted to give today, but Father, I don't have money. I pray that coming Sunday, Lord, bless me that I may bless your work. Simple. We are not manipulating anybody here. We are not here because of money. We are here to build the spiritual lives of the children of God. Okay, Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give to your work. As you do it, we are praying that your favor shall come upon the work of our hands. Let every giver, dear Father, obtain the material favor, the prosperity favor, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So for us who are not using the pay bill, please you can walk to the altar and uh, place your giving on the altar in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I request that all of us be upstanding. I don't know any announcement. Okay. So, after I release the blessing, we, all of us, will walk to where the tent is before you go home and before we start the second, the Kikuyu service. We'll go, we want to dedicate the tent 
and we want to thank God for it so that the children can begin to use it maybe from next week on Sunday or later after this. And we really thank God for everybody that gave towards that uh, uh, project. It is done and we thank God for it. Now our children will not be very squeezed in their classes. We will share, some of them will go there, some will remain here depending on their teachers, what they will decide and God will bless us. Now in the name of Jesus, let the favor of God work for you throughout the week. In whatever you do, let the favor of God be evident. Wherever you go, carry that favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I cover your people now with the blood of Jesus. I declare they are blessed, they are highly favored in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Somebody shout amen. Amen, amen and amen. So we are walking out to where the tent is in Jesus' name.